welcome, 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 welcome to WrestleGram. This is your boy, the host with the most, but humble. I do mean humble. Dino Stranavis, a.k.a. Derek, and I'm here, of course, on a Wednesday to give you, of course, the AEW Dynamite. First and foremost, thank you so much for being a part of the show. If you're watching it today, you're watching it tomorrow, you're watching it next week, I truly do thank you for your service. I thank you from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my knowledge. I truly do thank you. Without you guys, it truly wouldn't be me. And I promise you, I mean humble. I truly mean humble or whatnot. If you want to do anything else for me, then other, of course, than watching the show, thank you so much. Go ahead and hit the like button. If you like my stuff, I, try, I guarantee I'm liking you. So, you know, you like me, I like you. Hey, let's keep this relationship going. How about that? If you do anything else for me, go ahead and hit the sub button. We're on the road to 1,000 subs. On the road to monetization. So, let's keep going. Let's keep at it, you guys. Let's keep at it. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. If you want to do anything else for me, other than those three things, which I am grateful for and I thank you so much for, go ahead and hit the notification bell. I do seven, seven core shows each and every week. Each and every week, you guys, I got something coming up. Uh, or each and every week, does it every day I got something coming up. Uh, and the meaning of that, tomorrow I do have the uh, My Two Cent where I talk about CM Punk and why WWE should be all in, no pun intended, on CM Punk coming back to WWE. I'll have that taken care of for you tomorrow, but we're not talking about the sad stuff. We're talking about the good stuff. Let's talk about AEW Dynamite, which was a very decent show. I enjoyed it times 12. Uh, some little stuff I didn't like, uh, of course, that's with every show. You critique it to the way that you mold it. Now, I promise you, you can always put a comment in there and you can tell me what if you liked it or not. I truly do thank each and every one of the comments that I get each and every day. I truly do thank that. Uh, so, let's talk about it. Uh, first and foremost, we had Daniel Garcia and the Ocho, Chris Jericho versus Claudio Castanoli and Willa, uh, Willer Utah. Willer Utah. Willer Utah. That's why I said okay. So a very very decent match. Um, apparently Claudio Castanoli is truly upset with uh, not only the uh, strife within the Blackpool Combat Cup Club, but of course with Chris Jericho and the Chris Jericho Appreciation Society. Uh, 2.0 was out there, followed by of course. Well, we didn't get Sammy Guevara because he has a match later on that night. But we did have 2.0, which is uh, Cool Daddy Hands and Cool Daddy Hands Ange and uh, Magic uh, Daddy as well, um, or Daddy Magic, I'm sorry, Daddy Magic, uh, along with Jake Hager, who hasn't been doing a lot lately, but they are all out there to support Chris Jericho. And when I tell you, it's a lot of shenanigans in this match where uh, either it's uh, 2.0 or... Um, 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 Jake, Jake Hager, it's a lot of it, and truly, Claudio truly gets upset behind all of these uh, moves that they are trying to go go across. So he literally goes out of the ring. He clears waste. He clears waste literally of everybody. Everybody's gone. He gets back in. He does the equalizer on to Chris Jericho for Chris Jericho to for Chris Jericho not to. Uh, tap, I mean, a uh, kick out of this. Uh, he does that beautiful. Uh, we've never seen the equalizer. I always see him do that, and I, I see him do this, but I've never seen the move. Finally, see the move. I like the move, and we get a win from the Blackpool Comeback Club. Uh, the match was okay, but the ending part I thought was even better, where right after the match, we get a promo from Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. And Brian Danielson says he's frustrated. He's truly frustrated uh, because he lost to Chris Jericho. He lost the AEW title uh, shot. He also uh, hated that Daniel Garcia uh, portrayed him, stabbed him in the back. 
And he's also upset with uh, Willer Yuta because of the fact that they had that scrite or that little back and forth last week uh, well, when Willer Yuta literally told him, hey, you truly messed up. All of this stuff that's going on is because of you or whatnot. We have this strike because of you. You are the only person that isn't on the path that we should be on. Um, so, um, after, well, the, they're coming up into the ramp, and of course, Will, Will Yuta is giving him the blues again, telling him once again, it is your fault. Everything that's going on is your fault. Uh, also, uh, so they're, they're about to go back and forth. They're shoving each other. Claudio Castanoli gets in the middle of it and says, yo, we're going to have to stop this. We got to stop this. On top of this, it's Will Yuta's birthday for crying out loud. So, and like, soon as Brian Danielson gets done with his match with Sammy Guevara, we're all going to sit down. We're all going to try to figure out what we need to do to keep this faction beautiful and going. Come on, really. You got multiple champions on that uh, in that group. You got the world champion still there, one of the greatest managers of all time in that group. Let's try to figure out what we can do to keep everything uh, running with uh running and running smoothly uh so after that uh we get uh chris jericho appreciate society they are upset but we got a little bad audio what not uh, the audio was kind of off uh, so we really couldn't hear a lot of what was going on but chris jericho was truly furious uh with the fact that they did lose and he is offering uh he's doing an open challenge for a uh for any world title holder in aw to face him Next week on Dynamite. Uh, after that, we get Swerve and Our Glory versus FTR for the number one contendership title. Uh, I thought this was a pretty decent match as well. Uh, I didn't like the ending of the match, but it is what it is. Uh, FTR does still have the issues with the Gun Club, with them coming out with, you know, dressed up as them, which is truly lame because they have no belts to talk about like nothing so i thought that was pretty lame um so the match was the match was really good uh, a lot of this the, the conflict between swerve and our glory is that keith lee is a face and swerve strickland is a born again heel <laughs> so it, it the story is that you know keith lee is trying his hardest he's trying his hardest to get keith lee not to do the dirty tactics but win clean. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Swerve Our Glory did win <laughs> due to the fact of a lot of stuff that's happened at the end, which I didn't like. Uh, but before the match even starts, we do get the acclaim to come out. They are the champions. They are watching uh, on top of the stage. Uh, well, on the on the stage uh, area uh, with chairs. Him, them and Daddy Ass. But truly, at the, at the end of this match, uh, we do see that um, the gun club grabs uh, Cash, so Cash could not get back into the ring. Swerve Strickland uh, delivers a low blow to Dax, and <laughs> Keith Lee doesn't see that and does a beautiful finisher onto Dax to win the match. So they we will get a um, a Swerve in Our Glory versus um, the Acclaim three. Hopefully at full gear. Hopefully this will end the relationship between, of course, uh, Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee. Putting, hopefully, Swerve Strickland in, you know, some type of title run other than the tag belts. I mean, there uh, there's a zillion belts out there in AEW, and he should be getting at least one of them. Uh, after that, we get a um, promo with Soraya. And before they even talk, you know, they're... Uh, them and um, they're just showing love to one another. They're, they're happy that they're both on AEW and not on WWE anymore. But out comes Britt Baker, uh, 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 Britt Baker, DMD. And she, before the, the interview even starts, she comes in and they're having a back and forth. And uh, uh, Paquette says, yo, stop. We're going to have a interview uh, tomorrow or next week. With y'all, it's going to be a sit-down so y'all can air out your grievances or whatnot. So uh, after that, we get an MJF promo. 
Uh, Paquette is everywhere today. I mean, Renee is literally everywhere uh, doing every type of promo there is imaginable. So uh, MJF is the next person that she is uh, talking about. And her question was, um, who you think is going to win? And who would you like to win this match between, of course, John Moxley and Penta? Uh, now, MJF is like, I truly, you know, he, he truly wants, of course, John Moxley. But he doesn't care. And he talks about uh, he's a devil and who out here all worships the devil. And everybody was like, yeah, we worship the devil. Yay, we're all crazy Satanists. Yay, that type of stuff. Uh, so, um... He also tells uh, uh, where they, uh, in all due respect, pl please shut up. Um, and he gets on the mic and he just rips again like he always does. Um, he says, I'm not going to earn this uh, bag. I'm not going to earn this belt uh, because um, it. Uh, I'm going to literally win this match clean. And then he's like, well, not kind of clean. Kind of dirty because, you know, I am a heel. So I'm going to somewhat try to do it, but he's going to promise everybody that he will not use the diamond ring to his advantage at this match. Also, uh, he talks about William Regal uh, to tell him um, that the brass knuckles, he was going to use the brass knuckles because he didn't need it because he truly, 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 truly needed it. Uh, he also uh, says that he holds a grudge and a chip on his shoulder uh, and he's and this match is not for anybody but the people who have doubted him. And as soon as this has happened, and I truly win, um, I'm going to take that shoulder. I'm going to take that chip off my shoulder. I'm going to cram it down everybody, all the naysayers' throats. Uh, out comes Stokely Hathaway, and Stokely says, uh, "Well, sarcastically, he was like, yeah, we're we're not going to attack." Of John Moxley throughout the time frame before full gear, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and <laughs> beautiful thing where MJF tells him, "Yo, I need him at a hundred percent. I need him at one hundred percent. If you touch, you shouldn't touch him. Don't breathe on him. Don't even look at him. Nobody touches John Moxley until I do at full gear. Uh, if you do, you are fired." Uh, from his offers or whatnot. So after that, we get a Matt Taman challenge. Now he is part of the kingdom, and he tells uh, everybody that he is a multiple-time uh, champion, also a Grand Slam champion in Ring of Honor, and he has challenged Wardlow to a match uh, to take that belt off of him. Wardlow kindly accepts and ready for another power bomb symphony. Uh, so after that, we get Sammy Guevara versus uh, Brian Danielson. Uh, Brian is literally uh, in a he uh, well da uh, yeah Brian Danielson uh, is truly in some type of trance uh, throughout the entire match. Very great match when it comes to Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara always puts on banger after banger after banger. No pun intended to the brawling brutes. Uh, but, um, <laughs> the end, of, we got like a Spanish fly off the top rope. We got another Spanish fly, uh, doing an Irish, Irish whip. We got some really crazy, 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 um, <coughs> stumps to the face, uh, by Brian Danielson, uh, followed by a Bella Lock. Uh, it, I mean, it was wild. When I tell you this match was brutal. Sammy got all his stuff in, and Brian Danielson most definitely got all his stuff in. Uh, it looks like uh, Sammy Guevara really did those uh, yes kicks or those it kicks um, on uh, on Brian Danielson, and you can tell that every kick he made him look, he just went into a, a trance where he was really, really crazy. Uh, we also get a psycho knee uh, by Brian Danielson, but that was not the one that he wanted to do. So he put him in a death triangle uh, hold and um, Sammy Guevara passes out. While Brian Downs is just elbowing him on the top of the of the head. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm guaranteed that he, well, I, I can kind of see where it's leading to that Brian Downs is probably going to leave and uh, just be a, a heel. Um, 
the way it's looking, uh, MJF is not going to leave full gear with that title. It looks like probably Brian Danielson is going to leave with that title. Or Brian Danielson is going to eventually be the champion. And then we're going to get more face stuff from MJF for him to turn fully face and take that belt probably off of Brian Danielson. That's what it looks like. I don't know. That's what it's kind of leaning toward. Um, so after that, we get a um, a promo with uh, Ray Phoenix and Albert, uh, the translator or their the manager there, and they're just saying that who's going to win. Of course, they saying that uh, Penta is going to win. They uh, he will be the second uh, ever double or dual champion, and they start talking about of course Penta. What uh, Penta can be a, a dual champion as well. And he should challenge for the All Atlantic title. Uh, out comes Chris uh, Christian Cage. He comes out with Luchasaurus and says, uh, "Did y'all not hear what I said last week? Uh, Luchasaurus is out for blood. He's out for gold, and he wants anybody who has gold. It's an open challenge uh, for anybody." So um, Orange Cassidy comes in between both of them and says, um, "Well, both of y'all, we can have a match, and we will have a match next week." Or I think they're going to have, yeah, they're going to have their match on next week on Dynamite. Another triple threat uh, for the All-Atlantic title. So after that, we get a uh, Riho versus Jamie Hayter match. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. I am not a fan of Riho. Uh, I've seen a lot of Joshi wrestling, Joshi wrestling, and she is just so, so very small. Now, I... I will say that this match was uh, fine for what it was worth, but it was a it was too long. It was way too long. Uh, Jamie Hayter is literally a hundred and forty pounds, and Riho's Riho has to be at least ninety eight or not eighty or ninety pounds. She's a very small person, and to me, this match was it was good. Well, not good. It was okay, but my thing is, it was not relatable. Like, I didn't feel that Hater was going to lose any time in this. It wasn't, I wasn't convinced at all. Not at all. Um, I mean, she did some pretty nice moves, but I wasn't convinced. Like, I'm lost on how she became the very first AEW's women's title uh, champion, the holder to me. I'm still lost behind that. But we did get a win uh, with uh, Jamie Hayter for uh, her to do that, that, uh, that, um, uh, what is it, the Riptide? It's a Riptide, um, um, uh, Lariat, a beautiful Lariat or whatnot for her to win, uh, a Ripcord, Ripcord Lariat for her to win, um, now Jamie Hayter um, apparently is ranked number one, and Tony Storm came out with her belt, and it looks like she has challenged uh, Jamie Hayter to hopefully uh, full gear. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, after that, uh, I mean, Renee is just literally doing every single uh, uh, promo right now. Um, we got her uh, with Eddie Kingston. And her question was to him, was, um, who do you think is going to win? And she was like, or oh, are you having a good time? You're like, I'm having a great time. I'm having a wonderful time. I'm happy. But if I had to choose, it's going to be John Moxley and everybody else leave me alone. Pretty much. Um, so after that, we get a Darby Allen um, promo where he talks about why we don't see Sting uh, after that match they had with... Uh, the House of Black, and he says that he talks to he talked to Sting, and he was like, um, "I don't know where I'm going. Um, I feel like you know this is not working." And Sting was like, "No, you got to keep going. You got to keep moving." Um, and he also says that you know uh, he he needs to do this for himself now. Uh, so he will be facing, of course. Jay Lethal, one more time. I think that's going to be on Dynamite as well. I may be wrong, but um, we did get a promo with, of course, um, 
Jay Lethal as well with Sanjay Duck saying that, of course, we're going to destroy you yet again. And it is what it is or whatnot. Uh, it was a point where it looked like Jay Lethal was, was turning face because he did tell everybody that he could do this by himself. And that didn't happen because Sanjay Duck and Sagnum Singh did come out to um, help. But we did know that Darby Allen won that match, uh, leading to almost a handshake between the two. But he did a push Sagnum Singh and Sanjay Duck out of the way to go back to the locker room. Uh, little, little, little cheek, a little cheek in the armor right there. But I, I think they're all back good. And after that, we get. Um, okay, uh, we get John Moxley versus, of course, uh, Penta, and, uh, that match was no bleeding this go around, not any bleeding, but a typical John Moxley match without the bleeding, uh, Penta, I love Penta to death, I think Penta's a really great wrestler, um, but, of course, it's gonna be John Moxley versus, um, I almost said the Miz. Uh, John Moxley and um, Maxwell Jacob Freeman for full gear. Of course, I don't care how many people they throw at John. John is not going to lose his belt uh, anytime soon. Uh, so we did. We got two Death Riders on back to back on Penta for him to win the title. Uh, after that. Uh, the firm comes out and just lays waste to John Moxley. Um, uh, MJF comes out. He's truly furious. He's upset. He runs to the ring. He looks at Stokely. He says, Stokely, you are fired. I no longer need you anymore. And the firm uh, starts attacking MJF. They beat the crap out of MJF. And uh, they do a powerbomb off uh, on a table on the outside to indicate that we may be getting a bomb, bomb, bomb face turn on MJF. Now, apparently, we were supposed to get that anyway, but that's what it looks like we're getting is a face turn, of course, from MJF, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, apparently, I'm guessing they were going to turn CM Punk heel. That's what it seems like. That's what it seemed like it was going to evolve to. But... That's what happens. Uh, fade to Black. Once again, very decent show. I enjoyed it. Time to Soil. Way better than, just like I said, way better than Raw uh, on Monday. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, like, share, and subscribe, you guys. I love you all so much uh, from the bottom of my heart. I really, really do. Uh, tomorrow, you will be getting the My Two Cents, of course, about... WWE and CM Punk. We'll see what's going on with that. We'll see what's going on with that. And I love y'all so much. Once again, I said that like 18 million times. But I truly do love each and every one of y'all who watch uh, my content. Until next time, the best is truly yet to come. Love, peace, and of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, wrestling.